All right, what's up, everybody? We have 10 minutes here to talk about painting your scope, or uh, maybe I should even just say actually coding your scope, because depending on what we're going to talk about, you may have a different technical term for it. Uh, in front of us here on the table is an example of a firearm and scope that I painted at one point in time, did it for probably about less than 25 bucks. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it, though, and we get questions about it a lot. I'd say the biggest question we get asked uh for folks out there, is first off, will it void the warranty? That's an easy answer. Answer, no. No, it will not void the warranty. Uh, although, just to avoid uh, perhaps a little bit of a pain on your end of ever having to you know, deal with something that you accidentally screwed up, we figured we could give some tips and tricks slash ideas, whatever it might be. Uh, and because it can be fun, you know, and, and not everybody wants to have their gun or scope look like everybody else's out there. Um, so a couple of things. Why don't we start off with probably the easiest and cheapest way of doing it, which is the old classic rattle can. Yes, sir. Uh, that's like what we have in front of us right now. Um, this, like I said, is a gun that I spray painted a while back with the scope on it. And that's actually one thing I'll start off with too. Whenever you're going to be painting a rifle scope, uh, we'd recommend that you do it when the scope is actually in the ring. So you'd set up essentially your scope and rings, you would get your eye relief proper, uh, have the scope set up exactly where you want it on the gun, and then just remove the scope inside of the rings still. So just basically take the rings off the base with the scope inside of them, and then go to paint it, or just keep it on the gun and paint everything all as one, like you see in front of us here. Um, that will help you out just because the exterior diameter of that scope tube and then the interior uh, diameter of the scope rings are a, a pretty precise thing there. And for example, right now in front of us, I used on my rattle can, I used a, uh, I used a sort of matte finish, but also a textured finish paint. And if I had all those, you know, high and low spots from a textured finish paint or something like that on the exterior surface of the scope and then tried to clamp it in the rings, they just wouldn't have as good of a clamping surface to, uh, to hold on to. And well, and anytime, Jim, you increase the diameter of that scope tube by adding a layer of paint on there. I mean, mm -hmm. like you said, we're dealing with a couple super precise yeah. things here that are trying to be married together. Yeah, and there is a little variance there, you know. Um, so, you know, whenever you see rings get tightened down, there's a little bit of a gap between the two ring halves. But ideally, if you don't have to mess with it, it's, it's always better. Um, so whenever it comes down to rattle canning and, and pretty much all these coating and painting methods, the biggest thing you want to do is just make sure prep, 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 prep. Um, so depending on what you want as the final outcome, like for this one, for example, I actually wanted a paint that would sort of uh, get scuffed and wear off over time because I wanted the kind of gnarly look. So I did still clean it up quite a bit with a, you know, regular isopropyl alcohol before getting after it to kind of degrease it. Um, you know, but I didn't, I didn't prime it or anything like that. I just basically sprayed it and I didn't clear coat it either. Cause I have clear coated in the past over some paint on a gun and I actually mm -hmm. hated the way it came out. Cause it looked really shiny. Yeah. It probably was just, I picked the wrong clear coat, you know, cause I know there's a million different kinds, but. Well, and I'd wonder with that gym a little bit, you know, you're talking like this gun is, you know, camouflage now kind of set up for hunting. I wonder if that clear coat, you know, could create some glare in the field. The sun hits it, you know, you're trying right. to, you know, obviously not spook game and. Right. Spook game. And there's, I th I'm pretty sure there has to be probably some flat clears out there or something like that that aren't as shiny, but I just, I just messed it up and I decided not to do it this time. Uh, of course you want to tape off lenses and numbers and markings. So on my mag ring, my illumination dial, the actual name of the scope, mag range on the side of the eyepiece, you know, and if I had exposed turrets, I'd certainly want to tape the numbers on the exposed turrets off. And I think I already said it, but lenses, 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 cover those things up with some painter's tape, and that should do fine enough for you. When it comes to the gun, certainly there's a lot of things that you want to make sure that you're not getting painted on the gun, but that's a whole another topic for another time. Uh, you know, obviously you don't want to get paint gunked up in your firing pin channel and all that kind of thing. Uh, you'd end up with a real headache on your hands or just having to redo the whole thing all over again. Um, so that's kind of the rattle can approach though. It's pretty simple. I did it in my garage in about, you know, like, I don't know, just one evening went home and just kind of set it all up on a tarp in the garage and, uh, opened it up for some ventilation. But some of the finishes that you see out there are other ones like, uh, Cerakote, you got Duracoat, you have hydro dipping. Yep. All very different from one another, but all to achieve uh, some sort of either uh, corrosion resistance or a cool custom look or scratch resistance and impact resistance. And in a lot of the research that I've done, 
it seems as though um, Duracoat is the one that you can apply probably most easily by yourself at home. You'd apply it very similarly to how we just discussed the rattle can where, you know, basically you set it up, um, yeah, and just prep it properly and then spray it and let it cure. Um, that is probably also, though, of those three that we mentioned, the least durable over time from what I've gathered. Uh, but most inexpensive, easiest to apply yourself. And then you kind of have Cerakote and Hydro Dipping. And um, Cerakote's a really popular one. You see a lot of firearms come off the line that are coated in some sort of a Cerakote. You, can, you know, see all kinds of stuff. Really, any like anything you'll see out there can be coated in Cerakote. It's all over Instagram, whatnot. Uh, tons of cool colors. It's a little difficult to do yourself. Uh, a lot of the Cerakote applications require an oven. Um, but when it comes to optics, what we've always recommended is Cerakote actually has a finish that doesn't require an oven. It just requires a really lengthy cure time. Okay. And if you can basically keep your scope outside of a hot oven in order to cure, but just do the regular air drying, um, it's not necessarily that I, I would guarantee you that something will go wrong with your scope if it ends up in an oven, but if there's another method that doesn't require you to heat it up to a couple hundred degrees or whatever it is, right? why not avoid it, you know? Yeah. Um, but I've seen tons of cool finishes come out in Cerakote with scopes. Um, it's fairly thin from what I've gathered, and it's the ceramic coating. That's kind of what makes it so tough. Ceramic is very hard. Uh, it's a fairly thin coating, so sometimes I have seen people do it where they take the scope out and they do it not inside the rings, and I think it turns out okay. Okay. But I'd still probably do it in the rings if I could. I think that I think you could still do that with Cerakote. I don't know. I'm not a master at Cerakote application, but I've I've seen people do it, and uh, it is pretty cool. Pretty cool to watch, and it's a very durable finish. It is. It is. Do you have any stuff that's Cerakoted? Uh, trying to think. Uh, my 165 Creed is. Yeah. I'm getting my shotgun barrel also Cerakoted just because I don't like the idea of um, the steel possibly becoming rusty and stuff mm. like that after taking it in moist environments. Uh, luckily, you don't have to worry about that so much with scopes because scopes are aluminum and anodized aluminum. You don't have to worry about it really rusting, but it's more just for the look and for um, sort of impact resistance on the finish. Uh, so that's that. And then hydro dipping, you should just watch some YouTube videos on It's really mesmerizing. Uh, they literally roll the scope basically in water. And some people have asked us before, will that compromise the scope in any way or waterproofing or void the warranty because it's been dipped in, submerged in water? Uh, it's it's not long enough or deep enough or anything like that to really affect your optic. Right. Um, but it is just a crazy thing to watch, and we have seen it done. You can get really, really precise, exact, almost... It basically is like fluid printing onto right. an object. So you can get really nice camos, uh, really crazy cool designs. You know, you can make it look like it's carbon fiber. You can make it look like it's it's anything. Um, and from what I've read, it's pretty dang durable. If you get a high quality one and it's done right, right. I've seen people right. who take screwdrivers to it and stuff, and it won't it won't uh, crack or scratch or anything. Yeah, I know guys. If they have a favorite camo pattern, or you know, maybe they get a rifle that has a stock that's a certain camo pattern that they like, they want to match it up. They do that with that as well. It it's, works out pretty slick. Is that what a lot of the shotgun companies do too? Is it hydro dipped when you see those shotguns that have really, really like pristine looking camo jobs? I think that is a hydro dip. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It must be. Well, there's all kinds of cool things that you can do out there. And one thing, so if you head into your garage, like I said, and you're just going for the rattle can approach, right? So we'll kind of go back to the basics or maybe the Duracoat approach too, because that applies similarly to a rattle can job and you can do it yourself more easily. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with grabbing things from a hardware store or even from outside that you can actually put on your rifle scope or your gun to get different patterns. So uh, just kind of referencing the gun that we have here on the table, what I actually did was I took an old laundry bag. So that's a mesh laundry bag, and it has that kind of uh, you know, just mesh texture to it. I laid that over in certain spots, not everywhere, but just kind of in certain spots. I wrapped the whole gun in paracord very randomly, and um, if I would have had time, and if it wouldn't have been the middle of winter when I actually did this, I would have maybe grabbed a couple of leaves that I would have just put sure. in random spots. And uh, then you just spray away. And when you spray through the mesh laundry bag, you'll get this kind of uh, snake skin or fish scale or whatever looking texture on it. You know, everywhere that the paracord was touching, it didn't get painted. So you have these cool lines in all random places. Um, I did multiple paint colors. So, you know, there's a little bit of that burnt 
rusty red, and then there's some greens and some black. Uh, you can really kind of go crazy with it, but it doesn't have to be anything super expensive. You just well, it's not it's it doesn't it's not meant to be perfect either. So, no. like you said, you can have fun with it. You don't have to worry about like, oh man, did this line up exactly right? And yeah. honestly, you know, if you're looking for a custom look, yeah, I mean, these are. You know, each one is going to be a little bit different. You can pick different colors. If you want to change it afterwards, you can change it. Um, yeah. I mean, this looks great, Jim. It's I mean, like a ghillie suit for your gun because you can just start plucking stuff from the natural terrain around you and just painting around it, and then it'll kind of give you that cool camo. Right. Um, other thing I should mention, too, is I don't expect this rattle can job here uh, with no primer, with no clear coat or anything, to actually be helping me out with any kind of rust thing. It was really more just for looks and, uh, and some camouflage, but I figured I'd throw that out there as well. And uh, anyway, yeah. that's it. That's it. Ten minutes. Ten minutes flies by. Nice work. Cool. Jim. Won't void your warranty with a vortex scope, like we said. Thanks for listening, everybody. Catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>